Hey, you series of tubes. I, uh, I got my valve cover back, and this thing's been through a lot, man. Um, initially, I tried to put a couple of uh, breather ports on the front radius of the thing, and uh, the angle that they were protruding, protruding from the head left me no hood clearance. In other words, I couldn't even close my hood. So, after a few tries of some different things, I've got something here that I think is going to work. Um, these are 8AN fittings and they're welded in uh, to the valve cover to serve as breather ports. I wanted to set up breather ports that kept the interior baffles intact because this is what keeps the oil from slinging up and into those ports. But in the process of it, you see we uh, made a few new holes that didn't used to be there. And uh, I got one there and I got one there. Alright. So, uh, yeah. That leaves me with a lot of stuff to have to polish. Uh, it's kind of just kind of raw. I didn't have a TIG welder, so I had to get somebody else to do this for me. And uh, I think they did a really good job, considering what it's been through, and you know the fact that we've this is the third try. Sometimes you don't get things right the first time, and you just gotta stick to it and try again. I just want to gently tap it down. actually trying to roll the lip down so rather than patching this with a piece the exact same shape it just makes more sense to find a thin piece of something and overlay it and just block that hole off I think I've got the clearance I've got another cylinder head here I can test that with so now I've got this thing taped up to try to keep all the junk out of the oil passages that get underneath this baffle plate. Now the reason why I wanted to put these pieces on the front is because when the car accelerates all the oil is going to shift to the back of the cylinder head. So to the back of the valve cover and instead of having these things in the back of the valve cover where any oil inside of the baffle plates would just run into it, I had them put on the front. So what I got to do now is fill these holes in. I just need a piece of sheet metal. Oh, here's a piece of the cold. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, so this is what we've got after that piece is patched and the welds are ground down and I've peeled all the tape off.
All right, so that's about as fine as we're gonna go. Flap wheels. I believe that was a 320 grit flap wheel. So I'm gonna do the rest of this sanding by hand. Oh, the joy. And I'm famous for putting parts in my sink and sanding them. So, anyway, all we need is water and sandpaper. I got a couple different grades of sandpaper here. I've got some, uh, yeah, all of this is wet sanding paper. Some 220, 320, 400, maybe some 600. The last flap wheel I used was a 320 grit, so we're gonna get the sandpaper wet. I'm gonna get the part wet. I'm going to take a little jump here. So now those are prepared for polishing. That's what I've got on both sides. And I sanded down the front of it with 1500 grit because I intend to fully repolish that side in order to blend it right up to the radius. Bam! Back in the garage. Can't focus, too shiny. All right, it's time to put this thing on the car. What you need to do first is clean out the gasket surfaces, and I've already done most of that, picking all the RTV out and everything, but I like to take a dry nylon bristle brush and kind of scoop it around through all the grooves and make sure I've got all the old RTV out of there. And do the same with these guys. Now we need some gray RTV. And everywhere on the valve cover, you find a bend like a radius you see right here on this edge there's gonna be a bend there a bend there there's another angle right there and then around on these portions everywhere where there's a turn you want to apply RTV the gasket will take care of all of the straight surfaces but all the curved surfaces here you want to have a little gray strip of that stuff in place
I'm just using a Felpro gasket. There's a the part number for you. There's the gasket set. And this came with a half moon seal that I don't need because I've already replaced it with the aluminum Evo seal. But some of you guys have this rubber seal still in place. This needs to go into the head. And you need to apply RTV to the joints all the way around the bottom and the top side right here. As well as a small little stretch where that matches up on top of it after you, uh, on top of the head before you install the valve cover. That keeps that from leaking oil. So these are the uh, these are the plug well gaskets, and this is pretty much self-explanatory. You can't put these in wrong. Well, if you can, then really you need to get checked out. Then you figure out which way is up on this gasket, and I got it. It's gonna make a little bit of a mess. Don't worry, we'll clean that up. All right, now here's how to avoid cracking your valve cover. I've got all the bolts snugged at this point. None of them are actually tight. So you want to start on the inside. Now the service manual says to only use 3.3 inch pounds. I'm sorry, 3.3 foot pounds, which would be 36 inch pounds or 39, something like that. But it's not much. It's just hand snug. And you want to start on the inside and snug those bolts down first because that puts the least pressure on the outside edges of the valve cover and it's less likely to crack it. Once you crack one of these, you either have to go to the junkyard and settle for something that says Hyundai on it, which is a no settlement at all, it's the same valve cover, um, or uh, yeah, or just carefully tighten your bolts down and don't break it. So that's what I'm going to do. And I start on the inside and after I get everything just hand snug, I give it a little quarter of a turn, make sure everything is about the same before I start. I just give these a quarter of a turn and snug, you'll, know, you'll realize quickly what that feels like. And then I go around the valve cover on opposite edges and I give everything the same treatment once it's all the way down, quarter of a turn, all the way down, quarter of a turn. And at this point, I just continue going around it and snugging the bolts. A little bit at a time, you feel it bottom out. Feel the gasket compress. And the inside bolts loosen up again. Just go around those, hand tighten them all. And the whole point is just to compress the gasket, not to actually put any torque on the part. The gasket does all the work. The most important thing is they're evenly torqued. And eventually with light pressure it won't turn anymore, that means it's done. Just make sure they're all the same. 